Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. To teach us about leadership, extreme ownership places us in the most stressful situation possible, war. In the second part of the book, the authors use their experiences in combat to teach us that owning problems is the only way to solve them. Jocko Willink, a decorated Navy SEAL officer, explains that war is hell, but war is also a brutal teacher author Leif Babin is a decorated Navy SEAL who became the primary leadership instructor for graduating officers after he co-authored the book New York Times bestseller Extreme Ownership Examines Leadership, Accountability, and Teamwork. This summary provides a brief overview of the book's concepts and ideas. After that, we'll talk about how to build teams that are willing to go to war for you, as well as how to deal with anxiety and procrastination. War is an extreme metaphor for life. A former Navy SEAL and a former commanding officer of a ground force, both men served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. In Ramadi, which was the focal point of the conflict, they were stationed in tandem. Echelon Front, their consulting firm, was founded after they rejoined forces. According to Sun Tzu in The Art of War, the art of war is the art of deception. Our authors contend that war is merely a more extreme version of everyday life. As a result, we can draw inspiration from high-stress situations to find creative solutions to common problems. A single trait that all good leaders share has been discovered by Willink and Babin, and it can be applied to business and other relationships as well as military leadership. If you want to be a great leader, you have to take a lot of responsibility for your team and your team's mistakes. They build trust by being completely open and honest, and as a result, everyone strives to achieve their personal best. So, despite its apparent simplicity, extreme ownership is not without its challenges. We want to know what you hope to accomplish in life. Is there a reason you haven't met your goals? Has a team let you down? Or are things just not working out for you in the same way they do for others? Do you have this feeling? As a result of taking full responsibility for our actions, the first thing we must do is stop thinking of ourselves as victims and begin acting as leaders. A person who is extreme in their ownership is someone who owns all of their possessions. This means that we are ultimately responsible for all outcomes, consequences, actions, and reactions that we choose to take. To put it another way, if we look at extreme ownership as a simple formula, it's basically 100% responsibility with 0% blame. If we look at a situation and give someone else or an event we didn't anticipate even 1% of the blame, we aren't acting under extreme ownership. To put it another way, it's up to us to evaluate this ratio and be self-aware. What is our responsibility to blame ratio in any given situation? Leaders are ultimately responsible and accountable. An oversight by a member of the team must be carefully examined. There could have been a lack of resources or training on the team, or perhaps the mission or strategy wasn't explained well enough. There are many responsibilities that fall on the shoulders of a leader, including ensuring that everyone in the team understands their role and ensuring that they take full responsibility for any failures that occur. Willink tells the story of how he learned the value of extreme ownership and how he was able to inspire others to do the same thing. SEALs were shooting at each other and at friendly Iraqi soldiers because of a lack of communication and confusion during Willink's first major mission in Ramadi. A friendly Iraqi soldier was killed as a result of this blue-on-blue -blue assault. Willink was tasked with investigating and delivering a report to the highest levels of command. To begin with, he went over every step of the process and tried to figure out who was responsible for it. As he descended further into the rabbit hole, he realized that the buck had finally run out on his own head. He was responsible. Standing tall in front of his superiors and his men, Willink accepted full responsibility for the calamitous outcome. What could have led to his dismissal actually had the opposite effect. In the end, Willink's extreme ownership set a precedent and gained him a great deal of respect. How often do you make excuses for why you aren't in the same position as someone else? It is because we do not take responsibility that we are not living up to our full potential. So every day, we need to look at the 100% 0% standard, because that's the standard that needs to be set. There's no bad in team. As a team, we're often told, there is no I. In many books, the topic of leadership styles and how to identify one's own style is extensively discussed. It's all a hoax, according to extreme ownership, and leadership is simple. Effective and ineffective leaders exist in the world. So, how can we tell if we're a natural leader or not? Our team's performance is something we should take into consideration. According to our authors, no team is ever truly bad. Ineffective management is to blame when a team fails to meet expectations. This is not to say that teams can't fail, but rather, 
How they deal with failure is what matters in the long run. Failure is a fact of life for every team, and it's not something that can be avoided. That said, how the team recovers and how they grow from the experience is critical. This story sounds like something out of a Disney film. Remember that movie where a bunch of outcasts are forced to play under the guidance of a sourpuss of a coach? His only chance of redemption is to lead his team of no-hopers to the final and win the big game. Coach is victorious, underdogs win the game. The team comes together in the end however, life isn't a Disney movie, is it? It appears that Disney screenwriters may have a point. Our authors believe that any team can be a winning team if the leadership is excellent. In Navy SEAL training, you may have heard of the Hell Week legend. In this week, the troops are put through their paces and exhaustion. Some exercises require teams to complete a series of challenging obstacle courses across the beach and the ocean in a rubber boat. In order to keep everyone on the same page, a training instructor assigns a crew leader to each team. The winning crew gets a break, while the losers are punished. The message is crystal clear, winning is rewarding. Our contributors share their memories of a particular hell week. Boat Crew 2 was on a winning streak, whereas Boat Crew 6 was having a difficult time of it. There was a lot of backstabbing and squabbling among the six members of the boat. Finally, a training officer decided to make a point, so he swapped out the leaders of Boat 2 and Boat 6, resulting in a dramatic improvement in both crews' performance. As a result of the change in leadership, the crew of the six-person boat won the next challenge. Boat Crew 2, on the other hand, came in second because they had already witnessed the power of effective leadership. Here's a good reminder to stop harping on your neighbors. Stop blaming your co-workers, teammates, and even your own family members. Instead, emulate the captain of the second boat's crew. Take charge of your own actions. Irrational beliefs. A strong sense of self-belief and self-assurance are prerequisites for effective leadership. It's impossible to gain support if we don't have a clear idea of what we're trying to achieve. In addition, if we don't believe in what we're doing, we're doomed to fail. Doubt is contagious, and it spreads from the top to the bottom. Leadership must have faith in the success of their plans or missions if they are to inspire confidence and trust in their followers. Everyone must be on board with the mission or goal, and everyone should be aware of their specific responsibilities. When one member of a team doesn't believe in the team's ability to succeed, the whole thing is in jeopardy. As a result, leaders must be crystal clear and deliberate in their plans, as well as possess an unwavering faith in their own abilities. It's up to you to alter the course of action if you don't trust the current course of action. The egos of both the leader and those around him slash her must be dealt with by those in positions of leadership. Even when we're not sure what we're doing, we need to have the courage to step up and change our plans. The rise of Superman teaches us that our goals and objectives should challenge us, but not break us. This means they should be difficult, but not impossible. It is our responsibility as leaders to instill a sense of optimism and a vision of success. We can't be engaged or motivated if we don't have a sense of hope or a future. Faith in one's ability to achieve one's goals serves as a powerful motivator. Procrastination and lack of motivation set in when we don't believe we can succeed. Decisiveness and teamwork to the extremes. When you're feeling anxious, stressed, or overwhelmed, how do you respond? If you're able to navigate a battlefield, you'll be able to navigate any other situation with relative ease. The message here is that great leaders can see through the fog, no matter what context they're in. By prioritizing what must be done immediately, Good leaders can assess a situation and put together an effective strategy. Being in charge means being able to see through the haze and make a list of priorities. Priorities should be established and then carried out step by step. The best way to deal with stressful situations is to focus on the task at hand and avoid distractions. As a leader, a good one can simplify and make the ground more hospitable. Also, a good leader knows how to protect their team and make them feel secure. Also, a good leader never spirals out of control or goes into spin mode. For instance, Babin and a few soldiers chased after someone fleeing the building they were targeting during a nighttime mission in an Iraqi village. They got themselves into trouble when they got separated from the rest of the team during the course of the pursuit. Another group of Navy SEALs were in the dark about where they were, and AK-47 wielding men were approaching them. To get the mission back on track, Babin went through a checklist of what needed to be done right away, find the fugitive suicide belt get away from the men closing in, and locate the rest of the team. Babin recalled Willink's advice to relax when under pressure, look around you. In situations like this, prioritizing and then executing are the keys. Because they were the most immediate danger, the oncoming enemies took precedence over everything else. In response, Babin's troops opened fire on the approaching men, killing one and injuring many more. While some troops advanced forward, 
others provided cover. Then the troops who provided cover moved forward, while those who were protecting them took over. This is known as a cover and move approach. They found their prisoner, searched him, and then rejoined the rest of the team to continue the mission. Despite the fact that this particular mission was a failure, Babin gained valuable knowledge about the terrain and tactics of the enemy. He also realized the importance of focusing on the task at hand while under pressure. Everyone on a team is more likely to succeed if they feel safe. In Leaders Eat Last and Dare to Lead, we learned about this. It is easier to work together when everyone understands their roles and feels supported. Avoid blaming others and take responsibility if results aren't successful. As a true leader has faith and trusts that everyone will do their job at the end of the day. As a good leader, one must also keep their ego in check and avoid making things too complicated. Plans should be easy to follow and comprehend. As we learned in the checklist manifesto, ego often gets in the way of using lists and procedures. When it comes to simple things like checklists, for example, many medical professionals think they're above them and don't need them. Finally, a decentralized chain of command is an important component of an effective leadership structure. Too many people to be led by one person is an impossible task. Teams should therefore be divided into smaller groups under the leadership of a designated figurehead with a specific goal in mind. As a result, many people put off their most important goal until a later date. Instead, they'll put off dealing with their problems by doing something else, and they'll make up reasons not to. Decide on your most important objective, write it down, make a commitment to it, and assume responsibility for completing it. Don't ever use the snooze button. There are three different alarm clocks that Will Inc. uses to get him out of bed each morning. I realize that this may seem extreme, but it's supposed to be that way. In order to avoid blaming anyone but himself for not waking up on time, Will Inc. says that he has three alarm clocks. If he snoozes or oversleeps, it's his fault. On a daily basis, we're confronted with a barrage of assessments and options. Getting out of bed is our first test of the day. This test is either a success or a failure for us. It's important to get out of bed on time in the morning to set the right tone for the rest of your day. We'll be more productive throughout the day if we're disciplined and stick to our plan of waking up at a specific time and starting our day as planned. Although it may seem counterintuitive, if we don't get up on time, other routines fall by the wayside. Discipline equals freedom, according to our authors. Every decision we make is a test, and we have to ask ourselves whether we've made a good choice or a bad choice. Every decision we make should be examined to see if it brings out our best qualities. Discipline and knowledge of the rules allow us to respond more imaginatively to new situations. When we're completely focused, we can unleash our creativity because we know the fundamentals. To sum it up, it's contagious to have a lot of ownership. When it comes to leading effectively, striking a balance is critical. It is rare for leaders to be both humble and confident at the same time. Even in the midst of adversity, leaders must maintain their composure and remain enthusiastic in order to succeed. When it comes to leading a team, a good leader always puts the group's needs ahead of their own. So many people aspire to positions of leadership but are unaware of the weight of the duties and responsibilities that go along with the territory. As a leader, you aren't just responsible for the success of your team, you're also responsible for the well-being of yourself. Leadership is all about taking responsibility and accountability to a whole new level. It's about making sure that everyone on a team has a clear understanding of their responsibilities and can put their faith in one another. There is no I in team, but there is AI, as Michael Jordan famously put it, there is no I in team, but there is an I in win. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.